Hello, everyone. Welcome to the WACIC Virtual College Fair. We've got an exciting session today. Before we begin, a couple housekeeping items. Note, if you have questions, you can use the Q&A button to type your question to our presenters at any time. Also note that your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists can't see or hear you. Be aware as well that we have some additional sessions available on the ThriveScan website, so if you have interest in any other institution, we'd ask you to go out and sign up at your earliest convenience. Note as well that the recording of this session will be posted on the StriveScan website at strivescan.com slash WACAC. With those items behind us, we'll turn it over to our first presenter from Weber State University. Perfect, thank you so much. I'll go ahead and get, get started here. Thank you, everybody. My name is uh, Jeshua Vansicle. I am a counselor at Weber State University. Uh, two housekeeping items is it's uh, Jeshua instead of Joshua, and it's Weber State instead of Weber State. Um, but if you make those mistakes, I already forgive you about it. Um, Weber State is located in uh, Utah, Ogden, Utah, about 35 to 40 minutes north of Salt Lake City. You can see our campus here on my screen. We're a public institution of about 27,000 students uh, with a good population online as well. We're right along the northern Wasatch Front. As you can see, our campus kind of rises along with the mountain there. You can kind of see where we're located here on our map. All the starred areas here in the western half of the United States are where the majority of our out-of-state students come from. We're pretty close, especially to come take a visit with us, especially as the plane flies nowadays. A big theme here in Ogden, Utah is where mountain meets metro. We are the second largest city in the state of Utah, so there are plenty of things to do downtown from comedy clubs to arcades, indoor surfing, indoor climbing, uh, but it's no secret that when it comes to outdoors, Utah is very stellar as well. Um, our campus, the same mountain our campus sits on right on the other side, we have a resort and just 15 minutes past that resort is the largest skiing and snowboarding resort in the nation. So there's plenty of things to do just to get engaged. Student life options is a good way to start with that as well. Whether it's a sporting event, outdoor recreation, skiing, snowboarding, uh, getting involved with student leadership, there's plenty of different available options out there. And as an out-of-state student myself, I can tell you the more I got involved, the more opportunities presented themselves to me. In terms of sports, we have 16 Division I sports teams, several different clubs you can choose from to play as well. Uh, we are the Wildcats. Our mascot there is Waldo. He's a nationally recognized mascot, uh, has won several different competitions. But apparently a group of Wildcats is referred to as a destruction. So our student section is the destruction. Our football team plays in the NCAA FCS football tournament this next weekend. We just won four conference tournaments in a row. Uh, volleyball is coming off their best season on record, making the NCAA tournament as well. And if you're into basketball and know who Damian Lillard is, uh, that's kind of a big thing here, too. Uh, all students get into our sporting events for free with your wild card. Not only do you get them for free, but you also can get four additional uh, people into our games with you. So if families visiting, it's a perfect time to all enjoy football, basketball, volleyball, softball, whatever kind of game you'd like to go see together. Weber State's broken up into seven different colleges, which expands out into over 225 different majors and programs. I do not expect you to be able to read this right now. However, it emphasizes all the different directions you can go with your education. Um, big ones of note are business and health professions are some of the top programs uh, within our school. Health professions specifically, all those programs are in the top 10% in the nation. We're the largest provider of nurses within the state of Utah, about 66% of Nurses here in the state come from our institution. And um, we also just opened up a new semester for our nurses. So you can now get in summer, spring, and fall semesters for that nursing program. Our out-of-state tuition fees is as listed. That's for fall and spring combined. A cool thing to note is during summer semester, all of our students receive in-state tuition. So pretty much minus $10,000 from this number, and that's what you'd be paying during the summer. Obviously, with the WUI, though, a lot of our students do get the wooey, it brings it down substantially. A big thing at Weber State is all about affordability. If you follow this equation all the way off to the right, you'd see little to no debt. That's our end goal with Weber State University is to leave our students with little to no debt. And that all starts with our lower cost 
40% lower than the national average, academic scholarships, FAFSA, other different scholarships, be that departmental, private, donated. And then lastly, our students do receive a lot of paid internships, work study opportunities, so that personal contribution can recycle back into your degree. In terms of academic scholarship, this is a very generous scholarship we give for our out-of-state students. The rubric here is simple. You line up your GPA with your SAT or ACT score, that those two will converge on a number and or color. And that's anywhere from a $7,500 scholarship per year all the way up to $9,000 we can take off of your tuition. This is a four-year scholarship and all you have to do to maintain it is have a 2.5 GPA or higher and also be a full-time student at our institution as well. In terms of housing option, the two most common questions I get from out-of-state students is, do I have to live on campus my first couple of years and can I bring a car? Uh, the, to answer those, you do not have to live on campus for your first couple of years. Um, and yes, you can bring a car. As a matter of fact, we specifically have parking lots for our residents here on campus. We have Wildcat Village, which is more of our suite style, and then University Village, which happens to be more of an apartment style here on campus. So bonuses to doing so is our campus that live, our students that live on campus their first year get $1,000 off of their tuition. A, a ski master pass, which is a season pass to Powder Mountain. As I mentioned, that's the largest skiing and snow resort in the United States. You get a pass to there. And then also you can join our living learning communities. It's essentially like student club, but living based where you live next to people with the same major or hobbies as yourself. This last slide would be good to take a picture or screenshot of. This is my contact information. Applying is really simple. We're an open enrollment, open opportunity institution. So um, if you graduate high school, you are eligible to go to Weber State, no minimum GPA or ACT requirements. So if you'd like information on how to do that or just general questions, please let me know. I appreciate it. Joshua, thanks so much. We're on to our next institution, the University of Utah. Hey everyone, Jasmine Bryan from the University of Utah. I'm so glad to have this opportunity to speak with you today. The University of Utah is a public flagship tier one research university located in beautiful Salt Lake City. If you haven't heard of the term tier one, it means we have the highest level of research on our campus. We're also very proud to be part of the uh, Association of American Universities. There are only 65 members. You must be on the leading edge of innovation and scholarship to be asked to join. If you Google the list, you'll see we're an excellent company. Stanford, Harvard, and MIT are also members. We have about 24,000 undergraduate students and our average class size is just 23. So you'll get to know your professors well. Our location is amazing. We are within 45 minutes of seven world-class ski resorts. We hosted the Olympics in Salt Lake. We're also a half day's drive from five national monuments, just 10 minutes from downtown Salt Lake City, where students can watch a jazz game or professional basketball team, grab dinner, maybe do some shopping or have an internship. Salt Lake City has been voted one of the top 10 pro business cities in the US. So many of our students will have an internship, catch the light rail for free using their student ID and be back on our beautiful campus in just minutes. We offer over 150 different majors. We have our own medical school, law school, school of engineering, film, theater, architecture, direct entry, nursing, so much more. I wish I could tell you about them all. I'm gonna highlight just a few. The David Eccles School of Business offers nine undergraduate majors. Not sure which one is right for you? Start with business scholars. Our business scholars program lets you try out all the different areas of business before selecting the one on which you would like to focus. Business scholars also travel to uh, national headquarters and meet with CEOs of uh, Fortune 500 companies. If you're interested in gaming, the U should be on your list. The Prince Review ranked as number one in the nation. Uh, also, our students have published 99 games so far. Cutting Edge Research is the name of the game in our engineering department. The Milliken Institute ranked the U number one in the nation for the transfer of technology to commercialization. Why did we do so well? We're all about putting innovation into action as can be seen in the picture of the Luke arm named after Luke Skywalker. The Luke arm was developed at the U and is a prosthetic arm that can not only move, but feel. So it can tell the difference between picking it up an egg or a rock, for example. Do I have any entrepreneurs out there? Lassonde is all about creating your own company. 35 companies have been launched in the past two years. At Lissange, you'll find a 20,000 square foot innovation space. We hold 
weekly get seeded programs. It's kind of like our own version of Shark Tank. Students learn how to pitch their idea for funding. One Lasan startup, Boundary Backpacks, actually raised over $1 million to launch their company. Students can live in Lasan as well in themed living spaces. Now, while everyone might not want to start their own company, many students are interested in having an internship. Hinkley allows students from all majors to have local, national, or global internships. As the U is located in our state's capital, students can intern in the state legislature. Through capital encounters, students can have a paid internship in Washington, D.C. that includes a subsidy for housing, which is really nice, so that way your whole check does not go just to pay your rent. And students always ask, do you have study abroad? Of course we have study abroad, but we also allow students to intern abroad. We've had students intern in over 50 different countries and we regularly have students intern in Australia and Jordan. Not sure about your major? No problem. We offer major exploration class that starts with a self-assessment and then allows you to learn about all the majors offered at the U. With our LEAP program, students take a class in the fall and in the spring with the same group of students and the same professor. With LEAP Global, your classes will be in the fall on our campus in Salt Lake City, but in the spring, you can be on our campus in South Korea. So yes, you can be doing a study abroad your first year. Our Student Life Center has one of the largest outdoor adventure programs in the country. Students can rent any equipment they need for their next adventure or sign up for a guided rafting, backpacking, or climbing trip. And yes, we have plenty of skiing and snowboarding equipment available for students. We sell lift tickets as well, and you can catch a bus from our campus to take you right to the slopes. The U has over 600 clubs and organizations and an active grief like, so there is plenty of ways to get involved in our campus life and create your own signature experience. The U is very proud to be a Pac-12 school. Our must or mighty Utah section has a tradition called the third down jump. When our opponents are facing third down, our students jump in unison, which creates a seismic event, which has been picked up by engineering a mile away. We are a common app school. We utilize holistic review, giving primary importance to the rigor of your coursework and your grades in those classes. We will be test optional for fall 2022. We're very proud to be a WUBI school. The Western Undergraduate Exchange allows students to receive a discount on the out-of-state tuition, Wooey scholars pay one and a half times the in-state tuition, saving over $15,000 a year. Wooey is awarded to all students from Wooey State submitted with a 3.0 unweeded GPA who also meet the December 1st deadline. Here's my contact information. I will put my email in the chat as well. I am based full-time in the Bay Area, and I'm here to assist you through the application process. Thank you. Thank you. We're on to our next institution, Westminster College. Bear with me for just a second here while I get this going. Okay, um, hi everybody. My name is Walter and I'm an admissions counselor representing um, Westminster College in Salt Lake City. Um, some of this is gonna sound very familiar since we are coming right after the U who is literally right down the street from us. Um, but we are a 32 acre campus located in the heart of Salt Lake City's uh, eclectic sugar house neighborhood, which is just about 10 minutes from downtown, 30 minutes from six mountain resorts and just a stone's throw away from a number of national parks. We have the benefits of a larger city with, with trails just 10 minutes from campus and 10 ski resorts just within an hour's drive. Westminster is a private independent liberal arts college where students benefit from multidisciplinary learning in an atmosphere dedicated to civic engagement. Um, we are a liberal arts school, which means that you will be able to explore other interests to, and broaden your knowledge in areas beyond your major. Uh, we have a total enrollment of just over 2000 students with about half of our students being out of state. And as a private school, we have the same tuition as well as generous scholarships and need based aid for both in-state and out-of-state students. Westminster has a close-knit supportive community and is a teaching first institution, which means that all of our professors are here because they genuinely love teaching and they care about the students. Um, you won't be in a giant lecture hall of hundreds of students with our average cl class size being 15 students with a cap of about 25. And so you'll have a closer relationship with your peers and your professor. 
Westminster has over 50 programs and majors, some of the most popular majors being nursing, business, performing arts, biology, and outdoor education and leadership, and our, our 50 programs and majors are all split among the five um, schools that you see on your screen there. Uh, just a little bit about athletics, Westminster College Athletic Westminster College Athletics is a member of the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, and we are an NCAA Division II school, and we are home to about 15 NCAA Division II sports teams, some of which are listed on your screen there as well. Um, so if you are a first generation college student, we have programs geared towards you and your success, such as the Legacy Program and McNair Scholars. Um, for students interested in research, Westminster offers incredible undergraduate opportunities with about 85% of our students participating in internships or research by the time they graduate. And if you have any questions about the rest of the programs that you see listed on your screen, our contact information will be listed on the last slide, so feel free to contact us at any time. Westminster has a two-year housing requirement for all incoming first-year freshmen, um, and so why do we require this? Um, basically, we just want to build a community for all of our students to feel a sense of belonging once they're on campus, and studies have shown that students who live on campus are more likely to succeed in college, and this success could mean just building their social networks, finding community, and just having the motivation to show up to class and other events just because of the close proximity. Now, um, Westminster, Westminster also offers the opportunity to become involved in one of over 40 student-led clubs and organizations. Clubs range from those that are more major specific to those that are more social in nature. And if there isn't a club that exists that meets your interests, and if you know others who have similar interests and would like to join a similar club, you are more than welcome to create your own. And a full list of clubs and information on how to start your own club are available available on our Associated Students of Westminster website. At Westminster, we deeply care about our students' success and well-being, and we offer a, a wide variety of student support services. With respect to time, I will not be going over every single one of these, but if you just, again, take a look at this list, and if you have any questions about any of these services, our contact information will be on the last slide, and we invite you to contact us with any questions you might have. So big question, um, how do we pay for college? There are a number of ways that a student can receive aid at Westminster. All students are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships when they apply, and students can also be considered for need-based grants from Westminster. Um, finally, Westminster is a test optional, uh, we have a test optional application um, and we have a free application with two ways to apply. One is through our free application directly on our website. The other one is through the common app. We don't prioritize one over the other, whichever one is more convenient to you. So that concludes my presentation. Um, thank you again for your time. And like I said, here's our contact information. We invite you to reach out to me or any of our wonderful admissions counselors at any time. We're here to support you and we look forward to connecting. Walter, thanks so much. We're on to our next institution, New Mexico State University. Hi everyone, my name is Susan Metzler. I'm an admissions advisor with New Mexico State University and now we're moving out of Utah and now down into New Mexico. Um, one thing down here that I want to point out is New Mexico State University is located in the southern part of New Mexico. Actually, the closest major city to us is El Paso, Texas. El Paso is about 45 minutes away from our campus. We, while we are located in the desert and get over 300 uh, days of beautiful sunshine every year, we are um, in a river valley, so we do have grass, we have trees. People tend to think of the desert, they think of, you know, cactuses and rocks. While we do have that in the area, our campus is very green and a very beautifully um, laid out campus that's very pretty um, architecturally speaking, I like it. Um, we are located right up against the Oregon Mountains where there are a lot of outdoor activities. We have lots of mountain biking, we have lots of hiking, camping, you can go kayaking. Um, also to the area of New Mexico we're in, there are a lot of horses, there are a lot of ranches and horses, there are a lot of people out in the area who are 
horseback riding. So if you like horses, um, you know, it's something that you might want to do. So, so a little background about New Mexico State University. We are the land grant university of New Mexico. We were originally established back in 1888 as the land grant university of New Mexico. Um, up until 1960, we were New Mexico A&M. So our first two major focuses were agriculture and engineering. But in 1960, um, because we did have so many other majors that have been added to that, we changed to New Mexico State University. Um, we are known as the Aggies. So uh, that is kind of a nod to our agricultural background, but we do have a very large and very well-known College of Agriculture. So this is our location. Like I said, southern part of New Mexico, El Paso is the closest major city, the closest airport. Um, we do have a free shuttle service that will actually take you from campus to the airport and pick you up. First year students are allowed to have cars on campus. That is not a problem. Um, Albuquerque is about three hours away from us and Tucson's about four hours away. Um, we are located in Las Cruces, which is the second largest city in the state of New Mexico, but it's not a big city. We have only 100,000 people in Las Cruces. It is a college town. Um, we have a very awesome relationship with the city of Las Cruces. So many people that live in Las Cruces actually either went to school or work at New Mexico State University. So we have this really great relationship with our surrounding area. We have um, a lot of festivals in Las Cruces, even though it is a smaller city. Um, twice a week, they block streets off and we have a big farmer's market with food trucks and live music. Um, we do have a lot of bands that come through and play on campus in Las Cruces. Um, we also have a large Southwestern Film Festival in Las Cruces that is not put on by the university, but we are very involved in the film festival. Um, we do have students from all 50 states and 89 countries. We do have over 200 clubs and organizations. We do have Greek life. So if you are interested in joining a fraternity or sorority, you do have the opportunity to do that. Our campus is very large, over 900 acres. So we have room to grow. Um, when, you're, when, when you're walking around campus, you feel like you're in a park. It's very pedestrian friendly. Lots of people on bikes, longboards, people out walking dogs. So it is a very um, pedestrian friendly campus. It isn't located in an area with lots of traffic. So it is a really safe, um, very friendly and welcoming campus. We have just over 14,000 students on campus. We are undergraduate focused um, with only an average of 27 students per class. Um, being undergraduate focused, that means that so many research opportunities that might go to graduate students at larger universities actually are given to undergraduate students. So there's lots of opportunity for you to conduct research and work with your faculty members. Now, um, we do have a lot of out-of-state tuitions, uh, discounts, and scholarships. We are part of the WUI, so the Western Undergraduate Exchange. It is automatic. You don't have to qualify for it. Basically, if you're accepted to New Mexico State, you'll automatically get the WUI discount. Now, something that we do that is a little bit different is we do stack some scholarships on top of that. Um, we are currently, we're always test optional, but this year we are basing our scholarships based on your weighted GPA. That's something to keep in mind. Um, we do have a um, deadline for some of our better scholarships, but we still are accepting applications and we still are awarding scholarships. Now the scholarships are in addition to the discount. So it, you know, it, it makes Mexico State University a really affordable option for you. These are our different uh, fees this year. Our current tuition and fees for students in the WUI states, $11,279 a year. And that is before any sort of financial aid or scholarship. We do have other additional discounts that you can earn based on your GPA. Um, there are a few of them that will actually bring you down to our in-state rates, which are just over $8,000 a year. As far as academics, we have over 100 undergraduate degree programs. These are our academic colleges. Um, Agriculture, Consumer, and Environmental Sciences is one of our older, oldest schools um, and very well established. We do have our College of Arts and Sciences, and this is where you're going to have things like you know, chemistry, biology, English, journalism, broadcasting, but also our, um, a creative media institute that has digital, digital filmmaking and animation. We also have our College of Business, Education, Engineering, and we do have the oldest honors college in the state of New Mexico. Um, and we have nursing in our health and social services clubs and different activities that you can join. We do have division one sports. These are our D1 teams. 
And that is my contact information. Susan, thanks so much. We appreciate all the great information. With that, we're on to our next institution, St. John College. Hi, thank you guys for joining us tonight. I am gonna to share my screen and hopefully it's the right screen. Let's see. All right. Great. All right. Well, so I am an admissions, one of our associate directors of admissions at St. John's College. Um, before we get too far into our presentation, I would like to have the audience kind of look through this list of questions and see if any of these things kind of resonate with you. Are you a reader? Are you one of those students who really like to keep asking questions in class? Uh, do you do mock trial, model UN, or perhaps speech and debate? Um, do you consider yourself you know, sort of a curious, uh, thoughtful individual. So I would say if you've answered yes to two or more of those things, uh, you might be a Johnny. So St. John's is a small private liberal arts college. We do have two campuses, um, but we have 800 students between our two campuses. So we're teeny, teeny tiny, but essentially students study 3000 years of human thought across seven disciplines. This is a photo from our New Mexico campus, Santa Fe. We are at 7,000 feet elevation. And so, you know, a lot of people don't know, but we are at the southern tip of the Rocky Mountains. So there is, as was mentioned previously, there's lots of skiing and rock climbing um, and all sorts of good activities, outdoor programs, and it's uh, accessible for students every weekend. There's kind of a trip going on. Uh, our second campus is in Annapolis, Maryland. It is the third oldest college campus in the United States. So beautiful, historic, colonial um, campus. If a student is accepted to one campus, they're accepted to the other. So you can spend time on both. Um, so our program is a little bit different. You know, we're really known for our Socratic discussion-based seminar. We have no lecture halls and every class has about 14 to 15 students in it. Um, we do use primary text, so we study lots of philosophy, literature, law, politics, but we also study mathematics and science. So half of the time at St. John's you're going to be studying math and science. Everyone graduates with a Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Arts. So a little bit about student life on a teeny tiny college campus. We have over 40 different clubs and organizations, um, anything you can imagine. Uh, it is very student driven, so if you don't see something here, you can always start you know, start a club or an organization and you have the support to do that. So a little bit about what are others saying about St. John's? Who is St. John's? What, you know, what's going on here? A lot of people have not heard about us. Um, so Forbes magazine does call us one of the most rigorous colleges in America. Princeton Review and U.S. News and World Report ranks us pretty high for classroom experience and faculty. Um, so a lot of people have the question, and I think it's a good question, like what can you do with a St. John's College degree, right? What can you do with a Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Arts? And my answer to you, not just for St. John's, but for other Liberal Arts Colleges, is just really just about anything. Our students do really well on things like the LSAT. They score on average in the 92nd percentile. Um, but, you know, a lot of this comes from the small environment where you get one-on-one -on -one assistance starting your freshman year. There are paid internships. There are there's support to kind of figure out what you want to do. There's a lot of um, job opportunities, but also job shadowing and informational interviews. Uh, we have an amazing alumni network that are really excited to help students out. Uh, we have alumni, the chief, the editor-in-chief of the Huffington Post uh, was a Johnny. Um, we have Johnnies at NASA and Stanford um, at Deloitte. So they go into business, they go into um, financials, they go into education. So a little bit about our process. Uh, we do have three different ways up to apply. We have been always test optional and will continue to be that way. Our focus is really on an essay that we ask you to write in addition to the call. So a little bit about financial aid. Um, we really want to help students for whom this is an education that really inspires you. We want to help you get here. So almost 85% of our students are on financial aid. Uh, we meet individually. Uh, students fill out with a FAFSA, um, but we do have sort of an individual process um, to work through that financial aid if you, if families or you, if you have questions. So this is just a parting shot of our Annapolis from our Annapolis campus. It's about five blocks from campus. This is the docks, um, beautiful area in downtown Annapolis, um, lots of sailing boats and whatnot. And this is a shot from our Santa Fe campus. And this is up about a five minute walk from uh, the dorms or less and from our center of campus. Uh, our Santa Fe campus does have 270 acres uh, in the Santa Fe uh, 
mountains. So lots of opportunities for you know high quality of life. This, uh, please feel free to take a picture of this last slide. This is obviously my contact info. You're welcome to email me or call. I'm happy to talk to you at any point in your decision-making process. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're on to our final institution, the University of New Mexico. Well, great. Thanks for being here and watching tonight. Really appreciate it. Let's get things started here. Right from the beginning, I'm going to introduce myself, Gary B. with the University of New Mexico. And I always ask, what do you know about the University of New Mexico? And what I usually hear is UNM. Unfortunately, not much. So let's start with location. Unless you live in Albuquerque, UNM stands for University Not Close to Mom, right? You're leaving home, going away to college, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I know when you hear Albuquerque, New Mexico, you start thinking the desert, flat and hot. We're not. We're in the Rocky Mountains, UNM, University Next to Mountains. Yep, they're skiing nearby. And we're the same elevation as Denver. It snows and it goes. The city itself is about 600,000 people. Airport five miles away. Two big freeways, north, south, east, west. And the campus is located centrally, UNM, University near the middle. Easy access. What's there to do? Plenty. The International Hot Air Balloon Fiesta. 1,200 hot air balloons descend on Albuquerque every October. An old town, food, fun, Santa Fe, an hour away, what do you say? Carlsbad Caverns nearby, Colorado, three hours, Denver, six hour drive, and the Grand Canyon. Right now you're probably thinking, wow, Caverns, Colorado, Canyon, UNM, University near, much to do. We're not a big school or a tiny school, I always say UNM, University of a nice medium size, not too big, not too small. We're on the semester program. Students go from late August to mid-December, five weeks home for the holidays, come back mid-January, May 13th, adios. 13 weeks of summer. Studies, UNM, you name a major, I'll talk about it. Engineering, UNM, University from Nuclear to Mechanical and every other kind of engineering, chemical, civil, computer science, electrical. Maybe you're thinking, I wonder if we get to do anything. You get to do it. We're not going to talk about it. Out of 250 schools, UNM finished number 11 internationally in the Formula One race car series. Business majors, UNM, University with a number of management programs, and three out of four students had paid internship. Architecture, you're going to be able to work in your own studio on campus. UNM, University for Nursing and Medicine, two of the largest hospitals in the state of New Mexico are on the University of New Mexico campus. Direct entry nursing. I have students that typically graduate in four years with a BSN when the nursing program. Exercise science, athletic training, dental hygiene, pharmacy, music, the largest performing arts center in the state of New Mexico. Netflix is headquartered in Albuquerque for production and rightly so because New Mexico, UNM has one of the great film programs. And you're probably thinking UNM, University for Netflix movies. If you just don't know, just think, UNM, undecided no more, come explore, options galore, we'll open the door to something you're looking for. Research and honors college, small group discussion classes, 15 students or less. We're gonna get you ready today for that big tomorrow. So remember, UNM, University for Now and Manana. Lots of things to do, lots of fun, D1, free tickets, I tell students all the time, think about study abroad. If you go to Italy, the classes are in English, the nights and weekends in Italian. There's also national student exchange where you can actually do study abroad in America. We partner with 150 other universities across the nation. UNM housing, Un university nice as a Marriott. Dining, UNM, unlimited number of meals. ROTC, UNM, University with Navy, Marine, Army, Air Force. Let's talk about paying for college. UNM, you need money, we've got scholarship. The minute you apply for admission, you're applying for scholarship. 
And with a 2.8, you qualify for the Western Undergraduate Exchange, the WUI program. And with a 3.0, you get even more dough to help you in Mexico. Students with a 3.0 are paying the same as a resident of the state of New Mexico. Juniors can apply in June, you become seniors. We don't require an ACT, SAT. There's no essay requirement, no personal statement, no letters of rec. We're gonna look at what you studied in high school, what kind of grades you got. The minute you apply for admission, as I said, you're applying for scholarship. You're not committed, you're admitted. You don't have to decide UNM until next May. Apply this June, decide next May. That's the way to play, I say. The total cost for a student with a 3.0 is about 20K. That's all you'll pay. And what I want you to remember is juniors in June, your seniors. Apply in June, it's not too soon. Do it online, it'll save you time. Use your phone, do it at home, either way, the end of May. Then email me, Gary B, and I'll waive the fee, I'll make it free. Send a transcript, don't worry about that test, and I'll do the rest. 3.0, big dough to help you go. 2.8, still great. Don't be a fool. Stay in school. It's cool. Go to college. Get the nods. Gary B., remember me when you're making that list. UNM, university not to be missed. And just for Dave, I'll dab out. Thanks, everybody. Gary, that was excellent. Thank you so much. That concludes our panel. And the time we have left, we're going to ask each of our panelists to share some interesting facts about their school. So the first question we'll pose to the group is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We'll start at the top with Weber State. Absolutely. I would just say to take advantage of the resources and research the resources as you go from university to university to university. Everyone here on the panel, each one of our schools has a department specifically designed for your success to make sure you graduate on time in four years as comfortably as possible. So make sure you're making yourself aware of those before you get on campus. Thank you, University of Utah. Hi, just, I always like to say, remember you really are in the driver's seat. Students get really worried about where they're going to be admitted. And yes, that's of a concern, but you really, if you never apply to our school, we can't uh, have you enroll. So think about your options. Remember you get to decide where you apply and um, really do consider your out-of-state options. There are a lot of wonderful opportunities. I always think of doing going out of state as sort of a first step towards doing a study abroad. Lots of students like to do a study abroad because it's educational. You get to learn about a different culture. Leaving uh, your current home state is also educational. And there are lots of nice opportunities for you. Thank you. Westminster College. Um, I would say to find a university that has the same values that you do. So if diversity and um, equity and inclusion are all really important to you and social justice, then find a university that has those same values. And if you have the option, I would suggest that you go and physically visit that campus to see if um, it has, if you're the right fit for it, you're going to be there for four or more years, maybe longer after you graduate. And so it's really important that that place feels like home to you. Thank you, New Mexico State. What I would say is that know that your college experience and what's right for you isn't necessarily the same college experience that your family and friends have or want. Um, just because everyone is doing one thing, that doesn't mean that that's right for you. So um, there are over 5,000 colleges and universities that are accredited in the United States. So you've got the world's your oyster. Do your research, check out some different options. I think that what everyone's saying is absolutely, you know, right on. Um, I would just add uh, that there isn't one way to do college. There's so many, uh, you've seen tonight, so many different ways. So, you know, really giving yourself the chance to kind of explore and maybe visit, um, as Walter just said, but, you know, a lot of schools have apply and fly programs. Um, so that's always something worth asking, especially if out of state seems kind of like a big leap. Um, it's always good to ask the admissions office if they have a way to sort of help you with your travel expenses. Also, um, in addition to the admissions people being pretty friendly, um, it's always good to talk to current students at the university or college you're thinking about. So most of us have student workers working in our admissions offices, especially, you know, as we um, you know, come out of the era of pandemic. Um, so anyway, call the admissions office, talk to a student. 
Thank you. Up One next. of my favorite pieces of advice that I ever got and I always give is ask questions, follow directions. Admission counselors are here to help you get admitted. We don't work for the Office of Rejection. Our job is to tell you, if you do this, you'll be admissible. So reach out to the admission counselors and sooner than later. If you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, now's the perfect time to start reaching out and say, hey, I saw you on this Strive Scan, this WACAC video. I'd like to know a little bit more about your institution and helping me so I'm admissible. All right, so thanks. Thank you. We're on to our next question. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Starting at the top with Weber State. Absolutely, this one's easy for me. So uh, when I stepped on as a freshman in fall, we had a tradition during, oh, it was around homecoming week where we hiked to the top of Mount Ogden, which is the tallest one behind me here on my screen. Uh, we do it as a student body with our campus president and our university president. Sing, sing our songs at the top, give out prizes, and it's a lot of fun. And the fact that I didn't realize I was talking to our university president until about halfway up the whole time, I thought that was a pretty cool experience as a freshman. Thank you, University of Utah. So I actually, in my presentation, shared my favorite, which is the third down jump. Uh, being at a football game and having a whole bunch of students jumping so much and in unison to distract that opponent from reaching their third down, that it creates a seismic event, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but a new uh, tradition we have is actually, and they couldn't do it last year, but we're hoping it comes back. They took over the Student Life Center, which is a multi-story building and had laser tag until two in the morning. Very good, Westminster College. So I haven't been at Westminster long enough to be able to know what some of their fun traditions are. I started while this pandemic was going on. I just started in January, um, but I can tell you that um, we, we do have something called Winter at Westminster every single year for all incoming freshmen to come onto campus and um, just tour the campus. We have a scavenger hunt. And so I got to experience it this year and it was just a lot of fun to be able to meet students and their parents and their families in person amidst all of our virtual events. Very good, next up. New Mexico State University. One thing that I would like is first year walk. It's when all first year students, just right when classes, right before classes start, they um, we have a big pep rally for them in our Pan Am Center, which is where our basketball team plays. And then they basically go on a parade around campus with March band, our mascot, Pistol Pete, cheerleaders, and people come out of classrooms and offices um, with signs and clap. And it's basically greeting um, welcoming all first year students to campus. And there are, it's, it's a good way to meet people, a nice icebreaker. People are having, seem to be having a whole lot of fun. Um, and it's really just welcoming them and letting them know that they're very supported on our campus. Thank you, St. John's. Um, well, so I, one, of our, one of my favorite traditions, both as a student and now as an alum and admissions person, um, is at the end of the year, there's several different things that happen that are tradition for decades and decades. Um, but one of my favorites is that the, the seniors always pull a prank. And it's scheduled, I mean, it's scheduled, but we don't know what the dates are, even the administration, only a couple people know, but the seniors basically get to, to um, pull a huge prank on the whole campus. Um, and then that's followed by a couple of weeks later, the sophomores actually throw the seniors and basically the whole community, a weekend long party festival event. So there's music and games and concerts and all sorts of fun activities. Um, so that happens really two weekends before graduation every year. Um, and our Annapolis campus um, has a longstanding tradition of a croquet match against the Naval Academy. And um, they weren't able to do it this year because of COVID, but it's been over 30 years. Every April, uh, actually around this time, there is a, an honest to goodness croquet match, uh, US Naval Academy against Tiny St. John's College. And uh, we've held the title the last seven years. I'll mention my favorite tradition, and it's the International Hot Air Balloon Fiesta. Yes, it's an Albuquerque event, but it also integrates the entire community. 
and certainly the University of New Mexico. The students are encouraged to participate on a chase crew as those balloons across the skyline in Albuquerque with the Sandia Mountain backdrop. Oftentimes students are fortunate enough to be on the crew and get to even go up in the balloon. So if you ever get to Albuquerque, first week of October. Thanks so much. And thanks everybody for joining. We thank our presenters. We have a quick survey out there for anyone interested. So please go ahead and take that at your earliest convenience. Also note, again, we have more sessions available. So sign up. Lastly, the recording will be posted on strivescan.com slash WACAC. Get a big thanks to all our presenters and have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Adios. Mm -hmm. I have a good evening. <laughs>